Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Project Ozone 3 Kappa Mode. Oh, yeah, guys. Today, I would like to continue on what we were doing last episode. We were trying to get towards the Garden Cloche, but we had to do a whole bunch of stuff in order to get to this progression. Now, we are looking at making these black iron ingots, and in order to make those, we have to do Ender Crafting, and that requires us to have blank runes, and blank runes require blank slates. Blank slates require us to have a blood altar, and these imbued inscription tiles, we already have eight of those. We've already, either we got that from a reward we crafted, I don't remember. Uh, the craft gives you eight, so we might have crafted those. But anyway, uh, the blood altar requires us to have reinforced mm. exoskeleton plates from the Urbis. There's only one way to get reinforced exoskeleton plates from the Urbis. Do you know what that is? That's right, we have to go to the Urbis. Okay, so I don't know if we're able to do it right now. But I saw that there was a quest in here somewhere to allow us to do such things. If I can find the quest, I did not click on it, so now I gotta click through all of these quests again to try and find out what's not down here. It's gotta be up here somewhere. Uh, so that was getting to the end. This one, that one, one of these. Oh my goodness, where is it? I was just clicking on this one, Lambda, okay. So this one has the offering table, so we need to make this. And then we have to do the Staff of Gaia. And then we have to do the Gaian Keystone. Okay, so let's try and do this offering table. This is rather inexpensive. So we need some stone bricks, uh, some regular stone, gold and obsidian. Well, I think we have all of that available. So we need stone brick. We have the stone. We need an obsidian, which I don't have any up here. And then it was gold, right? Obsidian, we have plenty of downstairs, just don't have any up here. So let's just grab one obsidian from right there. Very good. Okay, so that should allow us to make the offering altar. Well, there it is. So quest complete, yeah? Detect, submit, claim. Okay, so that one's done. Staff of Gaia. This we have to make twice, which means we need two of these Gaian gems. I'm clicking on it and nothing. If I remember correctly, you have to do something special with the offering altar in order to craft this. And I don't know the scene here. Place into the game key. Someone will activate the portal. Yeah, it doesn't say how to craft that. So offer one obsidian, one emerald, and one diamond. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, obsidian, emerald, and diamond. Okay. So we need two obsidian... One, two, cool. And then we'll just put this down somewhere. This is kind of like a one-time use thing. I don't think we we're gonna have to use this many times over. So I'll just place this down. Uh, do you right click it on there? You do. So there is that, there is that, and there is that. So with all three of those together, they will do their little thing a few times. I think they might have to converge twice or three times in total. And then we get ourselves the thing that we are looking for. So that's the second one. I think the animations might be different since the last time I did this. I don't remember them having like the uh, particle effects like that. I could be wrong though. Anyway, right clicking, shift right click. Okay, shift right click grabs it. So this is the Gaian Gems as a gift from our mother. Sweet. All right, so we needed two of those because we have to make two of the, uh, the thingies. And there's that one. All right, so we'll let them do their thingy over there. So again, we also need some sticks, some vines, and gold. Well, sticks and gold is easy. We don't have enough sticks, almost enough, and then gold, easy. Okay, I don't think we have vines, but we, oh, we do have vines, perfect. I'm gonna say we can grow ourselves a large jungle tree which spawns with the vines and we can just vein mine them. Uh, but we don't have to do that. Okay, so now we should have everything. We just need one more stick, which we might have in here. Okay, very good. Cool. So now we can do one of those and one of those. Is that a quest complete making those things? It is. Awesome. Okay, so we'll claim that one and then we move on to the keystone. So the keystone... Uh, requires void infused cloth, thorium, dense crystal, and then some type of vines. Okay, so void infused cloth, I'm clicking on this and I am not seeing a recipe. 
thorium, I think we already have. Yeah, we have thorium ore. I assume we can just smelt it in here. I haven't tried doing this. Looks good to me. We just need 18 of those. Two blocks of thorium. Okay. Oh, you know what? I did not bookmark that. And I should bookmark this thing. Okay. And then uh, dense crystal. So the dense crystal is the one that's made with coal. Dense crystal. We have seven of those and we need what? 18? Yeah, it looks like it. So we need coal plus a simple crystal. Easy. And then coal. Easy. All right, so that's another thing that is pretty simple for us to do. We just have to come over here to our Lord Craft crafting. Yeah, this one crafting station that and that. That should be enough, right? Yeah, that's enough. Cool. Now, can I craft the other thing here? Well, let me do it. Oh, it does. Perfect. OK, so there is our dense crystals. Very good. So that is another thing off the list. Now we are going to have to figure out how to get the rest of this together. So back to here, the void infused cloth is something that I am not sure how we do. It's in, from Voidcraft. Actually, if we go back to the quest, is there a Voidcraft section here that might guide us through? Let's take a look. All right, so I was able to locate where we needed to go in the Omnicrom section here. This is blood magic and a Voidcraft, it looks like. Well, it even says it down here, or I'm sorry, Abyssalcraft and void craft, not blood magic. Um, so this is what we need void cloth. In order to do that, we have to get void filled flask. Now I'm sure I've done this before and I did get some void crystals when we were in the end. So we have some of those, right? But I don't know how we complete this. I haven't looked at these quests yet. So let's look at it. It says craft obsidian flask, then go down to Y level six or below and right click with a flask in hand. When thrown, it creates a voidic flame while on full blocks. If you want the flame to last forever, you will need to throw the flask at a void brick. Okay. So I don't know why we'd want to do that, but it wants us to do an obsidian flask. Okay. So obsidian flask. And that is one piece of glass with three obsidian. That's easy enough. Okay. So let's go grab some obsidian. I guess we'll do a few of these. I don't know why we wouldn't do a few of them. Did not mean to pull out a full stack. Okay, I guess we got 12 obsidian now. All right, so we got plenty of glass. Let us do that, that, that. Was that not the recipe to make these? Oh, I did it reversed. Ha! Okay, so glass here, this, this, and that. Cool. All right. So there is 16 of those. And if we take these down to Y level six or below, which we so happen to have right here, this is Y six. Build obsidian flask. Awesome. What was that sound? Why do I have a frog? And a pig and an ancient gold. Oh, you know what? Okay. Is the frog hostile? That's a weird looking frog. Uh, we have the pig and the golem down here because those are actually uh, hostile mobs. And it's dark in there, so they spawn. But why we have a frog? I'm not actually sure. That's from Quark. Okay, I've never heard that sound before. I had to check it out. <laughs> Weird. Uh, our squid farm is still squid farming quite nicely. I said I was going to get rid of that water, and I never did. Let's go ahead and get rid of that water so we're not just craft or creating all sorts of uh, drops in the world that we're not collecting. Yeah, we don't need ink anymore. And when we do, we can just go ahead and uh, put water back there. That should be fine. Okay, so now, oh, we got frog leg. So that's food. Can you cook those? Golden frog leg. What does that do? Look at the saturation on that. Goodness. You can do cooked frog leg. Interesting. I didn't know that Quark had added frogs to the game, but apparently that is a thing. So we just learned something today, or at least I did. Maybe you guys know all about that. 
I'd, I'd never seen it before. Uh, let's put the pork chops away as well. And then the motive core over here. Okay, very good. So we end up getting the filled obsidian flask. We'll claim the reward for that. Now it wants us to do uh, the book of void. Throw a filled obsidian flask at the ground, which creates a purple fire, then throw a Minecraft book on the ground. I assume it means uh, in the fire, not just on the ground. Book. I'd rather go do this like uh, in a spot that we haven't done anything in, like over here. <laughs> okay. So, let me grab the book as well. So one of those, and the book. And we get lightning, and there we go. I made the advancement, advancements.voidcraft.root.title. That is literally my favorite advancement ever. Yep, uh, advancement.voidcraft.root.description. My favorite description as well. Okay, so now, now we have this. We have completed the thing we will claim. We will do the thing. We will click this. And this wants us to have 64 void crystals. Are you kidding me? We only have 33, guys. That's not that's not 64. That's 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 like half of 64, but that's not the amount that we need. We're up to uh three stacks plus five, by the way, of the RAK. Uh we needed going back to here, uh 300 of those. So we're not quite there. I think that's what five stacks, six stacks, something like that. Um yeah, and then we need the basol's rods and then this from the Erebus, which we're going to be going to anyway. So we're we're working towards this as we go here. Mysteries of the Void documentation. Well, I mean, if we need to get a full stack of the Void Crystals, then I guess I need to go back to the end where we found the, the Void Crystal Ore and do some stuff there. So I guess that's where I'm going to go for the next little bit. There we go. That should be it. Right? Aha! So quest complete, void crystals, claim it. Sweet. So the next one we have to do this quest and then that unlocks our void claw. So below the bedrock, construct the portal like a nether portal, then throw a filled obsidian flask in the flame. In the frame. Frame, not flame, frame. So void crystal block, it wants us to do 14 of these and steel grinding ball. What? How do you make end steel? Is that something that we can easily craft? Uh, obsidian, dark steel, and end stone. Can we do it in the smeltery? Melter, high oven, melting. I don't think, no, no. It looks like we have to do it through uh, Ender IO. So it might be worth us upgrading our Ender IO from the simple to the normal Ender IO uh, alloy smelter. Well, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get back out of the end. I'll meet you guys at the base. Okay, guys. So we are in the process of upgrading from a simple machine chassis to the next tier, the industrial chassis. That's what's required for the alloy smelter here, industrial machine chassis. So we had to make the industrial dye blend. So that's some pulverized lapis, some quartz, uh, organic green dye. We've seen that before. Some cactus green egg and uh, we did pulverized coal for that. Yep. And uh, some organic black dye, which we did before. Some more pulverized coal and eggs or slime. Anyway, so there's our first industrial machine chassis. All the noises. <laughs> okay. Uh, which ones are we doing? This Edda one? All right, let's claim that. Cool. All right. Uh, so now that we have that done, we are pretty close to being able to make the regular alloy smelter. We do need to have, uh, this is part of the recipes, but I think we might need that for right now. I did make up two more simple alloy smelters. I had to make like eight of these simple machine chassis for all of this stuff. Uh, and then we got this one remaining here. But anyway, the next step is, is to make these dark bimetal gears. These are things that we haven't made before. So in order to make a dark bimetal gear, uh, this recipe shows that we need tungsten ingots, dark steel ingots, and a vibrant bimetal gear. The vibrant, Bimetal gear is made with a energized bimetal gear with vibrant alloy and vivid alloy ingots. The energized bimetal gear is made with the infinity bimetal gear, energetic and energetic silver ingots. And the infinity bimetal gear 
is grains of infinity iron and iron nuggets well i mean okay so there's a lot of stuff to do to make this one thing however if we click on this tab the casting tab if we pour molten dark steel onto an infinity bimetal gear we uh get the dark bimetal gear i feel like that's a recipe that should have been removed for kappa mode i'm not sure if this works I'm going to try it though, because that's a lot easier than the other way. So let's go ahead and get started on this. So grains of infinity. Actually, I do want to get rid of some of this other stuff in my inventory. Inventory is getting far too clogged for me for right now. Hey, we got in Darius. Uh, part of a balanced breakfast, not actually healthy. Contains 253 grams of sugar, 53 grams of fat, and 394 grams of ender dust. Side effects in, uh, of ender dust include... Nausea, dizziness, confusion, and random teleporting. <laughs> anyway, so put all that stuff away. Uh, we can put away this, 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 and that. And I think the organic brown dye I put over here as well. Okay, so inventory, a little more sorted. We got room to work now. So to get this done, we needed to make the infinity bimetal gears. We need two of these. So that's some iron, grains of infinity, and just iron, actually. All right, so iron. We'll grab that some nuggets okay so let's see if we can make two of those boom two done awesome so now that that's done we need the uh dark steel i'm not sure how many we need let me go back into this it says uh to make this four gems 128 millibuckets so that is just under one ingot per okay so two ingots should do it according to what this says let's go see if this works now i think the dark steel is going to take a minute to melt let's see how long that takes be right back all right so our mole our dark steel just melted down we have 288 millibuckets so let's put one of these infinity bimetal gears here and we'll pull the lever and it looks like molten dark steel did go on to it so it looks like it's doing something sweet and we'll put the other one there and that's filling up <laughs> that works for me now again i feel like that's a recipe that probably was overlooked and should be removed from the mod pack yeah I, I i don't know uh this recipe makes it look like it's really difficult but this recipe makes it like really really easy so i really do feel like this is probably gonna be removed in the future it really should be but anyway uh now that we have the dark bimetal gears we can get rid of that yeah, now it's just a simple matter of doing this. I made two cauldrons. I really only needed one. <laughs> I wonder if I can use that other cauldron for something later on. Probably, I guess. Uh, all right, so let's break this. And now we should have everything ready to go to make our alloy smelter. So let's do that. Oh, need two more dark steel. Boom and a boom. And there we go. Sweet. Okay, so there is the regular alloy smelter. Now this thing, if I remember correctly, absolutely has to have a capacitor to work. Yeah, we need a capacitor. Now, I think we have obtained capacitors from our loot bags previously. Uh, yeah, we have some here. So premium cooking wonder capacitor. This is nice explosive. Premium crushed. So that would work in the sag mill. Good hungry, good hiding. So good also in the uh, the painting machine. Premium hot. I don't, that might, I'm not sure if that is actually the alloy smelter. It might be. Like you have to like go off to the wiki and really know unless you've memorized all those. It might work in there. Well, either way, just putting that simply in the alloy smelter, whether that does good for it or not, will allow it to work. So we'll place that here, place that there and this is going to use 108 rf per tick and we're only making roughly 80 rf per tick something like that off our water wheel um so while we can use this we can't use it indefinitely we are not making enough power for it but we only needed that enough to make these end steel grinding balls which means we need the end steel which means we need to do this recipe that's 20 000 rf per item so when this is completely full, we can do, what is that? A little over 10? How many? We need to do like this recipe, I think three times, which means we are going to need 15. Now we might be able to do all the ones that we need while that's processing because it's still gaining RF. 
like the internal stuff will run down. Anyway, so in order to make that, we needed, what was it? Obsidian, dark steel, and end stone. Dark steel. We only have 14. I needed 15. Okay, I might have to make an, some more of that. So dark steel, end stone. Did I ever grab end stone? No. Okay, well, we know where the obsidian is. Okay, okay. Well, I got to go to the end and get some more of that. Um, yep, I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of this hooked up, and we'll be right back, guys. Whew. Okay, so we got a bunch of end stone here, the obsidian, and then I made another dark steel. And you can see, like, this was completely full when I started, so it is not using that much power. I think there was some power retained within our leadstone flux duct as well, since that has like an internal battery. But there's 15 of our end steel ingots, and yeah, they barely even touched the internal power of our alloy smelter, so that's really good. So the end steel balls, so that's just a plus sign essentially of the end steel. We can go ahead and do that, like a so. And there is a stack plus eight. Now I went ahead and I grabbed a whole bunch of end stone while I was in the end, so I don't have to keep going back and forth. Might as well, it's simple enough, especially with our saturation carrots that just give us unlimited vein mine capability. Um, but now that we have the end steel grinding ball, we need to mix that with a void crystal, and then we have to make 14 of these things, so let's do that. We can only make 13, are you kidding me? It told me to get 64 and I need one more, what? Oh no, I have to go to the end again, are you kidding? Why? All right, so I went back to the end and I grabbed a whole lot more of this so it's not going to get us again, hopefully. <laughs> anyway, so there is our 14th void crystal block that it said that we needed. I wonder if you could get away with 10. Do like a cheap portal kind of a thing? I have no idea. Well, anyway, uh, we need that. Then we need the uh, the void... Mm, what do they do with the void bottles? Are they called filled? That's what they're called. So we have to throw one of those inside this portal once we get this thing set up and we'll add this to our portal collection over here, which uh, maybe we'll put it over here. Trying to run out of room on that side. Doot, doot, doot. And one, two, three, four. And actually, now that I have placed this, oh, oh. Uh, can I break it with, th I probably won't get it back. Well, okay. I was going to put it into the ground one block. Uh, <laughs> okay. I will worry about that later. Let's just get this thing set up. I was going to insert it into the ground one block. So it was more flush like these, but whatever. We'll just leave it here. Okay. So now that that's done, we will throw that. And now we have a portal to the void. So let's go ahead and claim this. And, oh, we can claim this too. We're getting all sorts of rewards everywhere. And where are we at? It was Omnicrom. Okay, so void cloth obtained from liches that can be found in swamp biomes, which includes the Urbis swamps, Urbis's swamp too. So I wonder if we can get it from the void area. I don't know. How that dimension is uh i'm sure i was there before when i played project ozone 3 normal mode long long time ago but again it's like a long long time ago so i don't remember how these uh dimensions are but what i do know is that i want to make sure that i have a way back and i want to make sure i have my food and all of these kinds of things let's put uh the herbis stuff into here these things that we aren't currently using i'll throw that in there as well okay so we have food, we have our bow, we have our sword, we have pretty much everything that we could potentially need. Let's go to this dimension and see what's going on in here. Gotta press shift. No, I just hang out in there for a minute and things happen. Oh, right, okay. So there's like no sound going through that portal, which is kind of eerie. What is this? Liquid void mmm delicious so soft bedrock I believe you can mine this but I don't really know what this does for you you can make bedrock stairs I guess I mean that's cool you can paint things to look like bedrock 
Not sure why you'd want to do that. Ah, right. This dimension gets that purple stuff around the edge of the screen. I don't really remember. Is that like... There's something you can do to avoid that, and I don't remember what that is. It's been quite some time. I should probably... Uh, well, first of all, I guess I should probably mark where my portal is. Okay, so that's a specter. Uh... How did we get here? Where's our portal? Was it in this little cave? That's right here. So we should definitely uh, put a waypoint here. New. Uh, portal. Save. Close. Okay. So that way we know where to go for our portal. Yeah, I don't really know what the, the purple around the outside of the screen does. I'm not sure if that does anything in particular. So we got some ectoplasm. And we had some void chains. We're looking for the cloth, though. So that's a void wraith. More ectoplasm. This is a chained specter. I think that's the first thing that we killed. Okay, what is this? Cosmic material. Void wraith. Whoop. Chain specter. So we aren't seeing any new mobs here. We're not getting the cloth items that we need. Uh, are those more mobs down there? I don't know. It's hard to tell. That purple is like really enclosing on the screen, isn't it? Huh? What's down here? Void Reef. Now, actually, if I remember correctly in this dimension, if you go up too high, or I guess... Since everything's flowing upwards, that might be the void. We might be below the void. Is, is that what this dimension is supposed to be? If we go up too high, I believe you start taking void damage. So you can't go... What did that say? That's like... I thought I saw some text happening on the screen here. I don't know what that was. Uh, Yeah, if you go up too high, you start taking void damage, if I remember correctly. Uh, okay. Well... I'm not sure what we're supposed to do here. I'm just going to be wandering around a lot. I think what I need to do is take a moment and kind of remember how I did this dimension previously. It is really hard to see my mini map because that stupid purple stuff is covering it, huh? I guess we can go into this mode. So the portal is this way. The way that I'm facing, I want to go get out of this dimension, go back to the overworld for a little bit. Get rid of this purple stuff that is closing off my screen and try and remember how I did this dimension before. So let me go ahead and do that and we'll be right back, guys. Okay, well, I found like an end city looking structure. Let's see if anything crazy is in here. Uh, looks like there is some whole unreality down here where the nether warts normally would be. It said if you touch that stuff, it'll like warp you to a dimension, a random dimension. Uh, similar to like the coordinates where you uh, entered it from, so I don't really want to go to a random dimension. Yeah, I'm not really sure how that all works, but I'm not wanting to try it out. Uh, Void's Wraith. Ooh. Stop running away from me. Okay, so that thing just dropped some stuff. Quest complete, charred bones. Aha, ectoplasm. Well, that's not really what we need, is it? We're still looking for the cloth. Now, I was doing some reading in the book for Voidcraft, and it said that the end city things that we looked at earlier, like you take void damage if you're in there unless you have a special potion, and you can find void cloth in the chests up there. Uh, it also said the more of this purple stuff that goes around the edge of the screen, um, like you start getting... Pearl Prince Creeper. Huh. You start getting, like, things growing out of your arms, but I'm not seeing anything growing out of me right now. Maybe our Voidic infusion is not strong enough at this point. Something just exploded. That's fine, though. Uh, anyway, I think we just need to continue to explore around. They said that there, in the book that I was reading, it said that there was some kind of a, um... Plant life that you can find, and you can use that to brew a potion that wards off the the void effect that we are getting the purple. 
So I haven't seen... I have not seen any plants growing in this dimension, so I'm not exactly sure uh, what it is that we need to be looking for. The only thing that I've seen so far besides the soft bedrock is there is... I guess it's those same void stones that are infused in the bedrock. Yeah, I think there's some right here. Now, this is like the only other thing I've seen. And that just drops those same void crystals, so nothing too great. Anyway, I guess I'm just going to keep going back and forth. My my maximum HP is also dropping. That's another effect of the, uh, the void here. Uh, so let me zoom out. So we need to go uh, quite a bit over this way. Yeah, I'm going to try and get out of here, let the effect wear off, and then I guess we'll just keep going back and forth until I figure out what it is. I went too far up, apparently. Great. Well, it's still letting me creatively fly, and I don't think I should be able to, but I'm not complaining. I'm just going to get over here, grab my stuff, and then leave. So I got all my stuff. Uh, we have our totem... Ability totem. I guess the flight totem stays. That doesn't drop off you when you die. I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but I feel like I should not be able to fly right now. Let's get back to the overworld and take a quick look at this. Back to the overworld we go. Okay, so I get my HP back. Uh, So if I right click on this, well, it still says I have flight. So I guess you don't lose this one. Man, 83 player levels. Yeah, I guess you don't lose this one when you die, which is fantastic. Yeah, that's really, really good. Okay, well, I think we might be, I think we might be done for this episode. I'm gonna do a little bit more research on the Voidcraft mod. We really need to figure out how to get that cloth, because in order for us to proceed, we need it. And as you saw, the uh, the voiding damage that you take there is quite deadly. If you're not paying attention and you have very low HP, if I had normal HP, I would have been like, oh, I'm taking damage. Let's kind of float down a little bit, but I didn't have time to do that. But anyway, guys, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye bye.